Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Alone, and yes, I'm actually on my Iron Man again that I had forgot the username for, which is not that strange because I had actually not been online for one and a half years, which is the last time since I made content for this game. So why am I on RuneScape again? Well, the thing is, I am still really invested into Overwatch. If you watch my YouTube channel since I stopped making RuneScape videos, you know that I'm playing a lot of Overwatch. And lately I haven't actually made that many videos for Overwatch because I'm so busy grinding the game and getting good at the game because I'm really actually enjoying playing with the team I'm currently in, we participate in tournaments and all that and it's great fun. But lately I have not been playing Overwatch 10 hours a day which has been my regular day usually during the past one and a half years. I'm not really doing that anymore, I'm still playing a lot but not as much and in the downtime I didn't really know what to do so I thought you know I'm going to try RuneScape again because my friend kind of convinced me to do it and also if I'm going to be playing RuneScape, why not make videos for it? Because a lot of people have been asking me to make RuneScape videos again. Now, just to get everyone on the same page, this is not going to be a full-time thing like I did before. Before I only played RuneScape, in the beginning I made like videos two days a week or something, made a lot of guides as well. I made, uh, in the end, I actually didn't make that many videos because it was way harder to get content and I was way less motivated. So I made like one video per two weeks sometimes and in the beginning I started off making two videos a week so that was quite a difference. So what's going to happen is that I'm just going to be playing RuneScape in my off time, record some video content for it and then I'm going to still focus mainly on Overwatch but I just won't be making YouTube videos for Overwatch, at least from what I know right now. I'm just going to release the RuneScape videos when they are done it could be one week, it could be one day, it could be one month. I really have no idea. I'm just going to be playing the game casually, record what I'm doing and then put it out there because I know that there are people who want to see that. So that's going to do it for the introduction. Now I want to show you guys something that happened when I was farming for some Quintus keys to get that last Quintus signet for my Ascension crossbow. This is, if you don't remember, the state of my current signets. I still need the Quintus one. I need two of those to make the dual uh, Ascension crossbows and I also need one of the, I think this is Quartus one but when I was actually farming for keys which I currently have 21 of right now I got the ranged pet and then like two hours later I got the HP constitution pet yeah that's pretty crazy I'm going to actually learn both of these and uh, check them out real quick inspect and inspect now I have both of them I actually don't remember yeah there we go I, I, I thought it was on that tab so I think that's skilling pets yep there we go, that is the Sparky Pet, the ranged one. Let's see how that looks, if we can load in. Has a Robin Hood hat, not too bad, actually looks pretty cool. Is that like a old school bronze crossbow? It looks like it. Anyways, let's dismiss that and see the Morty Pet. That actually looks so cool. What the? This one is way cooler in my opinion than the ranged pet. I don't think you can, in, in RS3 I don't think you can lose the pets like you can do in old school. You can insure them or something like that, but... Yeah, I can have this one out now all the time when I do uh, PVMing and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. Now that I'm so rusty at the game, I'm only going to bring this many keys. I think this is 10 keys and I had 21 overall, so I'm going to do 10 and then 11 and then between the two trips I show you guys what I got for loot. But also look at the chat, I have 16,405 ascension creatures killed with one prestige and one prestige is 60,000 kills. So I'm currently at like 76,000 Ruari kills, kind of, because I kill some legions as well. But yeah, that's a lot of kills and hopefully I will get my ascension soon. It's not that bad for the first trip, I didn't have to use all the food even, so that's pretty nice. Also, I didn't even know, but I had a death assignment, so I got 15 Reaper points and 15 K Slayer experience, but yep, this is the loot that I got for the first 10 keys. Okay, this is actually insanity. The last key that I do, I get the Signet. Okay, just to put in perspective, I did like 200 Quintus kills before I quit the game. 200 Quintus kills. I did 21 now and I got the signet. Holy shit. Okay, listen, this is massive because I do already have an offhand chaotic crossbow in the bank and now I have one of each signet. Now all I need to do is actually get a dragon crossbow. Now if we go to weapons and I go all the way down here, you see 94 is the dragon crossbow. I can, I think, boost t with stews to 94. And then I do already have the dragon limbs in the bank. So I think I should be able to make this first uh, ascension crossbow now, the main hand. I don't really know how to do it because I've never done it before. 
But uh, yeah, let's get uh, on with that. That's actually crazy. Oh, there we go, 94. I'm going to have to do this really quickly. And then you apply this and Fletch, 94. There we go. Dragon Crossbow. As easy as that. And now I have to just use this outside the Ascension Cave and with all the signets. And that should be it. Maybe... Do you have to buy that thread thing? I don't think you have to do that. There's like a thread thing outside of the dungeon for 400... No, 500k cash. But I think that's only to make the uh, Sirenic gear, like the head, the chest and the legs. But anyways, I'm going to go to this guy and send it in to him and hopefully get my tier 90 weapon. Actually, uh, before I quit, the Noxious Bow, I think, was slightly better than the Crossbows. I'm not sure. But now the Crossbows are told to me to be better, at least. He said no. Bring one Dragon Crossbow, six different essentials. Oh, 100. Okay. I need to get the Ascension Shards. Okay, so now he should be able to make the crossbow for us. Let's do this. Yes, create. Let's go. Uh, is it the main hand that's given to you automatically in the beginning? I hope it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, that looks... Okay, I love this. This is so sick. Okay, I can still get the ascen offhand uh, ascension crossbow in the like semi-near future, but it's not going to be my goal right now. That's a divine impling. I can't catch that, I think. Oh, I can. Wait. What's my what what do you need the hunter level for? Come on, bro. Oh. Wait. Actually, that's not that's nothing special. Never mind. I thought it was way more valuable. Okay, anyways, uh, back to the point. <laughs> I have the uh, the um the one from Dungeoneering, the uh, Chaotic Crossbow as offhand, which is absolutely good enough with the tier 90. You have the tier 90 main hand, and then you have the tier 80 offhand. That's completely fine for most of the PVMing content. But if I want to upgrade, I can get the second Ascension Crossbow. But then I will have to get one Quartus Signet and one Quintus Signet again. And I do already have like 100 Quartus Keys in the bank, so the Quartus one should be alright. But getting another Quintus Signet and having the chance of having to farm like 200 more Quintus Keys is not going to be my goal right now so for now i'm going to be very very happy with this ascension crossbow and yeah let's get it now to something i'm really excited about actually is the master clue scrolls and actually showing you guys how many clue scroll points i currently have now this is something that didn't exist in the game when i quit and well i want to check it out for sure because i did do a lot of clue scrolls back in the days i can actually show how many i have hard how many clues have i done i have completed 418 hard which is you know it's a lot but it's not a, a massive amount compared to some other treasure trail hunters and i have 81 elites now let me go into the shop and see how many points i have i have 2900 points which is quite a lot of points and that means i can buy a lot of different uh clue scrolls and i'm going to be buying the elite ones and i will complete them on video and then hopefully get a master clue scroll which is going to be the goal and then complete that master clue scroll but the thing is i have absolutely zero clue what the requirements are for master clue scrolls and i've heard they are very high on some certain areas and a lot of quests and i do have 301 quest points so i'm pretty good there but if there is a quest i have to complete I will actually do it, so I'm going to be starting to do this, and let's get into the elite clue scrolls. I'm just going to complete the clue scrolls, show you guys the reward until I get a master clue scroll, and then go with that one. So I actually bought 10 of these sealed elite clue scrolls, so I have enough to probably get a one master clue scroll at least, and by the way, what is this visual bug? It happens all the time, I don't know why, but like sometimes randomly my chest plate or like legs or something becomes just all white and buggy and all that, and now it's time for the elite casket to actually bug out but anyways hopefully the reward isn't bugged let's see what we get all right well that's uh you could call that bugged i guess that's terrible but let's do the next one i think also when you open these ones you can randomly get a master clue scroll i think there's like a small slight chance that that happens but not this time all right so we're done with the second one i think i can reroll this one as well so if i don't get a master clue scroll on the first one i have a chance again to get it on the reroll so let's see what i get for this one you have opened well you found the casket Oh, and I got an achievement as well. Grape Vine Seed. What? I didn't even... What? Is this actually worth anything? Is this like rare or something? I have, I've never seen that before. Anyway, so I'm going to reroll that. That was uh, extremely bad. Confirm. And we got a trimmed item. 600k. Wait, what? Blessed Dragon High Body Bandos. I'm not actually sure if I have this. I have no clue. I'm going to have to go into the bank and shake that in a bit. But let's see if I get a master one. Nope, still elite. Let's do this one. 
Okay, third elite. Let's see what this one gives us. Uh, have to open the casket again, apparently. I always forget that. And we get Blessed Dragon High Chap Sauros. Now, also, I did check if I had the Bandos one in the bank, and I did not. So that was a new item, and I'm going to assume that this is also a new item. So that's pretty nice. I don't think I've seen this, like, Zaros before. I'm not sure, but yeah, I don't have those, I think. I will have to check, and I'll get back to you guys on the next clue. Alright, so the fourth reward is 200k, nothing really special, and I can get a reroll the next one, so that's going to be pretty nice. I'm going to open another one and see if we can get a master one, and it's elite again. But also, I just want to mention that these charity tokens, you can convert them to boxes, and I'm not really sure what the rewards are, but I opened one 250, and I got like 23,000 GP, so it's not that great, I think. But I'm going to open with a, I think I have like 4,000 tokens in the bank. After I'm done with the clues, I'm going to open like some 250 and some 500. And it says you can get a random assortment of prices. So maybe you can get some cosmetics and maybe some good stuff that you can use overall in the Iron Man. Alright, fifth casket, which is also really rollable. So let's see what we get. And we get no master clue and the reward overall is not that great. So we're going to reroll that one into... Uh, it's pretty much the same reward, I guess. Some fire lighters, but still no master clue scroll. Uh, if I don't get a master clue scroll from the five left that I do have, then I'm going to quit it there, but hopefully I get one at least. I have a good feeling about this sixth casket. Let's see what we get. And we... Okay, wait. This is something special. It's not a master clue scroll, but it's something. Cat staff. And Bandos Room Plate Legs. I'm pretty sure I have the Bandos uh, Plate Legs, but I'm not sure about the Cat Staff. I will have to... How does it look? Maybe I recognize it. Yeah, I don't recognize that. I think that's actually a new cosmetic for me. So that's pretty nice. Eh, not that bad of a clue, actually. So both the Zaros Blessed Chaps and the Cat Staff was actually new cosmetic items. So that was pretty cool. Let's see what I get from this one, though. Let's open the Cat Skits. After this, we have three more to do, so... Yeah, still no master clue scroll, but the next one we can reroll, and this is not trimmed. So yeah, I'm going to open this one, see if I get a master. No, still elite. Let's get it. We're getting close to the last elite clue scrolls, but this one is actually rerollable. So let's see if we can get a master clue on this one. And we did! That is a sealed master clue scroll, so we don't even have to reroll. Alright, that's pretty good. Um, I did get one of these Master Clue Scrolls on like the third Elite that I did on my main account. The one that's not an Iron Man that I had been uh, played like, just slightly on. Meanwhile, uh, I was playing mostly Overwatch. And um, uh, now it took me seven, eight, eight Elite Clue Scrolls to get another one. So it seems to be like fairly common, but not too common. So I'm going to be starting to do this. This is going to be interesting. Let's open this and see what the first step is. Dance on the Uncharted Eyes Isle. Beware of double agent. Dark Bow I do have. Infinity Boots I do not have. And Culinar Omancer Gloves. What is that? Okay, this... I do not know what these gloves are. And I think the Infinity Boots is from the Mage Arena or something. And I am not really keen on what to do in that part. So I'm going to have to look this up. But a Dark Bow I do for sure have. I didn't really know this because these gloves are like so irrelevant now, I think in RuneScape 3, the Barrows gloves, as they used to be called, is now called the Kulinomancer's gloves, I probably butchered that completely, and you could just buy them if you've completed all the steps in Recipe for Disaster, and here you go, this is all the different gloves, you know, I think you'd unlock one of them, I, I would assume, for every step you do, and I could buy the... 10 one because I've done all of the steps so all I have to do was spend 100k so now I just need to go to the mage training ar arena or whatever it's called and get the infinity boots. Now I'm going to have to admit I've never really done mage training area as a thing. I've been here like a couple of times way back in the days but I've never really tried it out for real and now that I had to farm 120 points in each and 1.2k of the enchantment one I have to say this is a very boring activity. I mean sure if you enjoy it but I thought there was like no joy to doing this at all and uh, now I should be able to buy the infinity boots so let's buy those there we go that's all my points now I do need to be able to get to the uncharted isles or whatever they're called and I did see that you need to complete a quest for it which is called impressing the locals but it is a short and the required items are 1000 coins and you get like one quest point so I'm going to assume that this is a extremely easy quest and it says access to the arc so i think i know what it is and it's kind of weird that i haven't already done it but yeah i'm going to do that so i'll get back to you guys when it's done 
So I did complete the quest and I also completed the first clue scroll step and after that the second clue that I got was just to dig on the island that I was already on so it was extremely easy to do but all the recordings for those got corrupted so I'm going to have to start from here and it should be fine now. This is the third step and it is to dig in this area in Heart of Gilinor so I'm going to do that and also I think there's like usually 8 steps. I think it's the people said it was 8 to 12 steps, so it's quite a long journey to go. Hopefully I don't have way too many restrictions that I have to complete to be able to complete it. But these are also pretty hard actually. The second clue that I got where I have to dig in an area on the place I was already at, I almost died. I lived with like 300 HP because I had basically just the weapons and no food at all. But yeah, let's see what the third step is going to be. No, 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 wait. This is actually going to be the fourth step, so let's see what that one is. Oh, it's an anagram. I, I can probably do that. So yeah, this one is actually very easy. It's just to talk to Lady Traher. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But anyways, let's see what the next step is. Let's read that. And we have... Alright, so we do have a requirement now. Let's see if I have all these things. Uh, Iban Staff. I think I have that. A Cavalier for sure I have. A Ghostly Cloak. Alright, I'm not actually sure what the Ghostly Cloak is. I'll look it up real quick. But we should be able to go to Port Vazmataz or Phasmatus. Yeah, I can for sure go to that place, so that's pretty cool. So I had to complete the Curse of Zaro's mini quest to be able to get the cloak, but I do have it done now. It was very short, I just had to talk to some ghosts in the wilderness and stuff like that. So, very easy, and I also got an experience lamp for it. I'm not sure how much experience it is. 10,000, is it like... Oh, it's 10,000 flat. I'm not sure what to put it in. I think I'll just do like rune crafting or something. No, actually, that's very easy with rune span. I'll just put it in herb lore because it's like kind of an annoying skill. I don't really care too much. But anyways, uh, I can do the step now because I do have the Iban staff and a cavalier. So I'm going to do that now. And that's completed. And let's see what the next step is going to be. Elven city of Prifton as well. That's very easy. Let's do it. Wait, really? It was that quick? I didn't really feel like I did more than like seven or eight steps at max. I don't even think I did that many. I'm not sure how many I actually did, but that felt like faster than it should have been. Maybe I got the minimum amount of steps that you can get. So yeah, that's going to be the first massive clue scroll complete and you get 16 treasure trail points for that. So that's actually quite a lot. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be very interested in seeing what the reward is. So let's uh, get on with it and open it and let's see what we get. Well... What is this? Wine of Saradomen. Right, so I'm pretty sure this is a pretty garbage clue scroll reward. Uh, very sure of it actually. But 600k is like three times the average hard clue reward and maybe like twice the elite clue scroll rewards. So it's, I, I guess it's alright. Uh, but it's probably not something you should like really hard hardcore try to grind for but you know in the future If I get any master clue scrolls, I will obviously do them and doing clue scrolls overall is enjoyable to me So that's going to be it actually for this video. I said I was going to open the Charity things uh, tokens, but I will actually do that in the next video because I realized this video is already pretty long So the next video will start with that. So thank you guys for watching my first video for a very long time Hope you guys did enjoy it and I will come up with a new video whenever it's done as I said in the beginning of the video But anyways, see you in the next one